Hi folks, my name is Dave. I teach computer science at Finger Lakes Community College and I teach a lot of those classes online. Previous to that, I worked at SUNY teaching teachers how to teach online. And previous to that, I taught high school for eight years, including two classes that I taught online. And here's the thing, even though I've been doing this for 10 years, ever since March, I have failed spectacularly. There's been a lot of things that went great and there's been a lot of things that just haven't gone so great. We have a ton of research about online learning and how it can be really, really powerful, how it affords students opportunities they might not have had, how it can afford teachers different tool sets that they might not have had. But we've never had a large scale longitudinal study that looks specifically at reluctant students and teachers who had to flip on a dime. Don't beat yourself up if things aren't going great. I think it's really important to have a good focus on community. And there's a lot of things you can do for community. Some things are really, really simple. You can say like, hey, if you show up five minutes before class, we're gonna be playing this game. And there's a ton of online games you can play. One of my favorites is Scribblio, and I put the link down in the description as well. You should also kind of encourage healthy habits. So make sure, you know, say, hey, where's your water? Everyone hold your water bottle up to the screen so we can see it. Stop class every 10 or 15 minutes and just do a stretch session. Maybe you have to stand up. Maybe you have to do stretches in your seat. I find that I have a lot of luck with engagement if students have something to look forward to, even if it's something small and dumb. Oh, okay, like it's sweater day today, wear a costume. St. Patrick's Day is coming up, uh, put green on. And that's also an excuse to say, you know, even if your students don't turn their cameras on for the whole thing, turn your cameras on. I wanna see like the, the green that you're wearing. I just really wanna celebrate that. If you're looking for a little bit more longer engagement, you could have your students uh, join you for lunch. You can do that and the kids don't make a mess. And if they do, it's not in your classroom. Or you could say like, hey, after school, I'm gonna be walking my, my dog. So come, come with me and you can just carry your phone as you're walking down the street. On the weekends, I send virtual postcards. If I'm going to the Adirondacks, I'll take a video from the top of a mountain just to get them engaged so that they see that there's like other things out there and that, hey, I'm thinking of you. I'm at the top of this mountain and I'm thinking of you. There's also a lot of research in nudge theory. And so sending nudge emails, just a little email that says, hey, don't forget the quiz they're due tomorrow. Like, I know it's in your calendar. I know you probably already have it done, but I just want to remind you. Students can get lost, you know, especially because they're navigating their LMS and now they have Zoom. So there's a lot of different software packages. So it's really critical that they understand ex exactly what's going on. You can have office hours. You don't have to call them office hours. You can call it like a cocoa break or a coffee break, afternoon tea, or just like a chat session. If you reframe it and make it sound like a cool hangout, then you can still engage students outside of class, but in the context of the their success in the classroom. There's also a few tips that you should consider to make your students more productive and, and give them kind of like those, those guideposts along the way. The, the first thing is like, you need to make sure that they know where to see their grades and any comments you leave on their work. Because the worst thing is to finish, you know, a, a marking period or a semester and find out that your students were never reading the feedback you gave them. So make sure that they know that early on, like where do I go to see my grade? But more importantly, where do I go to see the feedback? Because I wanna learn from that. There's also the Remind app. And again, check with your tech director for uh, Law2D compliance. But the Remind app is really, really, really cool too because that gets to the nudge theory and that also gets to the student productivity thing. So you can have communication and you can do it kind of like just in time answering questions. My buddy Zach at Honey of Falls Lima gave me this tip too because he knows that a lot of students would leave their, their previous class and then go to the bathroom, get a drink, get a snack, and come into his class late. And he's like, listen, listen kids, I, I, when you're done with your previous class, log into my class so I know you're here. It's okay if you need to go to the bathroom, even if you're 30 seconds late or a minute late, that's fine. I just want to know you're here. It helps them know that he's there and he's like, hey, I notice when you're not here, but it also helps them kind of cognitively go through the flow of their day and be aware of how they're impacting the teachers and other kids in the class. One thing that I I found, and I never did this before, is that, and I teach a programming class, is after I review everyone's code, and, and what I'm looking for is like, hey, is this format right? Hey, could this be condensed? Hey, is your logic good? I take snapshots and I put them in a Google Slides presentation. You could use PowerPoint or whatever, and I'll have like five or six or seven different slides, and I'll say, hey, here's something I saw that was really, really good. Um, or, hey, here's something I saw, and a few students did this, and I was like, yeah, this isn't the best way to do it. I've also found, and this might not be an issue with your learning management system, but some LMSs will uh, default to having the work due at midnight or 11.59 p.m., and I never do that. I'm not going to be up at 12.01 grading things. I do not want to be responsible for students staying up late at night use rubrics. It does take a little bit of time on the front end to get the rubric up and running. Grading online work with a rubric saves you a ton of time. You can sometimes share, depending on your learning management system, you can share that rubric with the students beforehand so they get like a, a little itinerary of exactly what you're looking for. Never underestimate the power of polls and you can sneak these in, especially online because everyone's in front of a device. So you can use Poll Everywhere or Socratic and really get granular instantaneous feedback and, and kind of drive the direction of your your lesson for the day. Oh, discussions suck. You have to have one post by here and two replies by here. I'm like, yeah, that that would suck if that was your conversation. It's better to make the, the, the discussions a little bit more organic. Maybe you don't have to respond to two students. Maybe you just have to have several well thought out replies and it doesn't matter if it's engaged with one person or if it's looking at different things. Make your topics really, really 
authentic. So for instance, take a picture of your learning space and, and post what you like and what you don't like about it. And then go, go look at the other students that have and say like, oh, that would drive me crazy if, or I really like what you did there because that helps me learn. So not only is it a nice icebreaker, but it also gives them the ability to think in on their learning. Like just realize that things don't have to be perfect. This video is not perfect. I've stumbled, I've said, um, that's okay. Students want to identify with someone who's not picture perfect. If you're looking for some research, there's a ton of books out there. I recommend three really, really, really good books. The first one is called Small Teaching, uh, and the link is in the description. You should totally check it out. Um, it's the Small Teaching online version. The next book is called Powerful Teaching, and that's more for face-to-face, -face, but the lessons in there translate super well to online. And the third book is called High Impact Practices for Teaching Online. So all three of these books, the description is down in the link, so make sure you check them out. Um, and, and I did put them in the order that I think are relevant for what we're looking at right now. Thanks for your time and hang in there.